Today was a sad day for me, and that's because I had to let go of one of my best friends, my Honda Ridgeline. Yes, my 2018 Honda Ridgeline, which I daily drove for the past three years. Unfortunately, I had to return her back to Honda because the lease is over. Yes, I leased my Honda Ridgeline. It was a 2018, it's been three years now. Now 2021s are right around the corner. Now the point of this video is to just give you my final thoughts on it. Uh, what's the Ridgeline like as a daily driver? Did I experience any problems? Are there any flaws? Are there anything that I didn't talk about in all the review videos that, that I created based on my Ridgeline from the very first one where it was pretty much the first video on uh, drivers only to all the other ones that I made afterwards in the winter, you know, in the snow, in the mud, um, the door hack, the tailgate uh, upgrade. There was so many videos I created and I know a lot of you guys watching me right now have watched those videos. Now before I get into my final thoughts, I did record a little bit at the dealership. Actually, it was one of those situations where I should have planned it out better. I should have cleaned up the car and recorded at home before I went, but everything was kind of rushed today. So I had no choice but to film at the dealership, kind of gave a broad overview of the Ridgeline. So take a look first and then let me share my final thoughts. So today I'm at the Honda dealership and the reason being I'm returning my Honda Ridgeline. I had it for three years. I leased it and now I am returning it. So uh, let me show you around. Let me show you around what this Ridgeline looks like after three years of daily use with two kids in the back. Yes, it's very, very dirty, but let me show you around because this is one good truck. So here she is, 2018 Honda Ridgeline Sport. So this second generation, a little bit curvier than the first generation, but I think it looks a whole lot better and it functions and drives a lot better too. So this is the Sport. So most of the chrome has been replaced with black. So the, the, the chrome grill up front, that was not replaced. However, if you look at the window surrounds, right, black. So it's not the chrome, which I, I don't like, right? You can also get black trim on a black edition, but you know what, I wanted to save some money, so I I, uh, I got the Sport, and I think it looks pretty good. And take a look at the wheels. Also, they're not black, but like a dark gray finish. And the reason why the tires are in such good condition is because these are pretty much new. As soon as I got this Ridgeline, I decided to change the wheel setup. This is actually what it looks like with my aftermarket wheels. It definitely changes the stance and the look of the Ridgeline, and I had those for three years and now I put on the stock one. So these are basically new. Um, without aftermarket wheels, you can see that they do stick in quite a bit from the fender. Doesn't look nearly as aggressive, but oh well. Here's a, here's a look at the back, the trunk. I have a tonneau cover, which I am not removing. Just too much work. Let me show you the trunk because the trunk is the best, best part to the Ridgeline. So the tailgate, you can open it up like that, like a standard truck. However, this is not dampened by any means, so it is actually very, very heavy. As you can see, if you let it, you know, fall down, that's a <laughs> that's a pretty heavy drop. But you can open it like this, and this is really one of the best features of the Ridgeline. I mean, this is really, really functional. Makes you know, loading a bed, getting inside, reaching deep into the bed, very easy. And this, the hidden trunk, has to be the best part of the Ridgeline. I love it. This is much bigger and deeper than it appears. So you might be watching this and you're like, okay, good amount of space. No, this is very deep, very wide. I could fit in there. And this is so convenient because if you're going grocery shopping, you're buying small things, you really, can't put it anywhere inside the pickup truck, right? You put in the second row, it's flying around. You put in the bed, it's flying around. This is actually a dedicated trunk. It is lockable also, right? So yeah, this is really, really convenient. I can't tell you how many times I've used this over the course of the last three years. This is really, really, really nice. Now the bed itself is composite. 
so you don't have to worry about a bed liner or anything like that this is heavy duty and you can throw whatever you want back here and you don't have to worry about it now rear door okay now this is actually a decent opening um, some of you guys have watched my rear door hack video where I changed out the, the checks or checkers inside right makes a huge difference if you own a ridge line and you didn't do that yet you should because it gives you about another six inches of opening normally it'll be like this which it's just not that it's just not that much room to get in and out this is a whole lot better so that's gonna stick with this ridge line back here inside of sport everything is covered in cloth and I mentioned about having two kids yeah under the car seats a mess and underneath a mess right if it wasn't a mess there's actually a good amount of uh, space down here to put whatever um, it's actually pretty usable right but yeah it's a big mess and of course you can there we go you can fold these up man it is dirty it is dirty I'm glad I'm just returning this and I don't have to clean it but yeah and the space here is the largest among mid-size trucks um, this is actually usable adults could fit back here let me show you I'm five feet ten and you see I, ha I still have about two three inches of leg room headroom is good too plenty of width but if you sit inside a say a Tacoma or a Ranger or a Colorado, it's just small, it's tiny. But the ridge line, very practical. You can haul people around, you can haul your kids, you know, car seats, not a problem. They fit back here. So I really like it. That's another reason why I chose the ridge line, because I knew it was gonna be a daily driver. I knew I had to haul my kids around. So in terms of mid-sized trucks, there's really only one option and it's the ridge line. Now moving towards the front, this is what it looks like. The seats, all manual, no power function, same kind of cloth. But take a look, after three years, the cloth is still in pretty good shape, right? There's no rubbing, no discoloring. It's a, it's a very heavy duty cloth. I mean, it's, a, it's held up really well. Door panel, pretty modern. Getting inside here, steering wheel, not leather wrapped, but yeah, it's okay. A good size steering wheel, feels okay. Not the greatest, but it works. And as you can see over three years, I've only put on about 17, 18,000 miles. So a little screen over here, it works. It gives you all the essential information. Uh, moving over here, a five inch screen. This is not really an infotainment screen. This is basically just radio, Bluetooth. But I do have a volume knob. So Honda, for a while, decided to remove the volume knob, especially on the bigger eight inch screens. This is worth it, just for this. <laughs> Down here, tri-zone climate control. Tri-zone, even on the base sport trim. Pretty nice. And your start stop, right? Uh, no USB port, just the outlet two cup holders, a standard shifter, six speed. I really enjoy the six speed. I know the newer Ridge lines, they went to the nine speed, but honestly, I like the six speed. It, it works, it works well. Now there's also drive modes. So there's snow, mud, and sand. And I, I uh, tested all those modes before uh, in deep snow and deep mud. If you haven't watched those videos, wait until the end of this video, I'm going to link them. But yeah, it has that four wheel drive, obviously. Big center console with, uh, yeah, a 12 e outlet and uh, USB port and a whole bunch of junk. Yes, it's very dirty, but that's just the way things are after uh, <laughs> after three years of use. Rear view mirror, no home link buttons, no sunroof. Of course, if you get the higher trims, you do get those things. But honestly, this was just enough for me, right? I didn't drive much. Uh, when I needed to make a trip to Home Depot or wherever to buy wood for my deck or to buy a new grill or to transport furniture around, you know, the bed was very, very useful, very useful. And, you know, overall, I think this is a fantastic midsize truck to be daily driving with. 
it, it's really, really good. You know what? Since I have this screen up, let me show you the fuel economy. So as you can see, my trip computer, the last 7,645 miles, I averaged 17.4. And almost all of that, almost all of that was local driving. I drive very rarely on the highway. So uh, that's pretty darn good. So there you go. That's kind of a breakdown of my 2018 Honda Ridgeline, which I've really, really enjoyed for the last three years. It's a fantastic midsize truck. And those of you guys that are looking for a daily commuter and you want a pickup truck and you don't want to go with a huge full-size truck that's very difficult to navigate and park and, and get in on a tight spaces, then you should definitely look at a Honda Ridgeline. It's a really good truck. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a quick run around, right? In case some of you guys didn't know much about a second generation Ridgeline, um, hopefully you learned a thing or two. But let me give you my final thoughts. Number one, I chose the Ridgeline because it was basically the most spacious in the class. And along with that, it's also the most comfortable in the class. Because it's a unibody construction, which for a truck, that's really weird, right? I know that. The whole body structure is very similar to a SUV. And because of that, it's comfortable, just like a SUV. It rides, drives, and feels just like a midsize SUV. And for me, I wanted that, okay? I know if you were gonna go off-road, if you want to tackle some really rocky or uh, some real rocky terrain or some real dips or you want to travel through deep mud, um, you want to take some, <laughs> take some crawls that are basically impossible without a front and rear locking differential, um, you know, that's not what the Ridgeline is for. I say most people that's buying a truck, you probably just go daily drive on the highway and local roads. And if you're doing that, the Ridgeline is the most comfortable by far. It's just very, very comfortable. Suspension is comfortable. Steering is good. Cabin quality uh, and quietness is good. Seat quality is also good. Um, so it's just very comfortable. The other thing that really drew me to Ridgeline is in the back, okay? It does have a bed. Yes, they all have a bed. But I'm specifically talking about that, that trunk. And over the last three years, I can't tell you how many times I've used that trunk. If you really plan on daily driving your truck, right, which means you go go and go to the grocery store, you go go to Best Buy, you go go, I don't know, Costco, wherever, you go get a lot of bags and smaller stuff, right? And you need to put that somewhere. So that's where the trunk really, really, really comes um, into play and is very convenient. It's very convenient, it's very big, but secluded. So for me, I could put 10 bags of groceries, 15 bags of groceries. You know, you could put your beer in there, your, your soda, you could put bags of ice, you could use it as a cooler. It's so large that you could pretty much put everything, but still, you don't have to worry about things flopping around like you would in the back of the bed or in the back of the, the cab. Also, the bed is good. It's not as deep. Like if you measure you know, the, the height, it's not as deep as the others uh, in the class, but it is very wide, more than four feet wide. So you could put sheets of plywood. Not that I carry any plywood, but I have carried furniture back there, grill, um, several grills in fact. I carried a ton of um, lumber, and that's because I was building out of a deck. I needed to buy a lot of lumber. And you know what? I threw everything back there, didn't worry about it. Composite bed handled everything. Now, my one regret is I bought the sport version, so there's no rear window, right? The rear window basically can't open. You know, there's not that little opening, right? I wish I had that so that the longer pieces of lumber, like I'm talking about the 10, 12 feet ones, um, and even 16 feet can actually go through the window, right? And you don't have to worry about it coming way off from the bed, which <laughs> I had to do a couple trips like that with uh, 12 footers and 16 footers, and the, the, they weren't fun. No, they weren't fun at all. Um, I was really afraid that it was gonna fall off, but I tied it down really good. So that's one regret. But the bed, you know, very convenient. Uh, you could haul things that you just can't with the SUV. 
The next thing is that multi-action tailgate. It's just very, very convenient. Very convenient. Um, I tend to open it from the bottom so it slides to, uh, to the left. So it makes it easy for me to reach into the bed if I need to. Um, and it makes it easy to reach into the trunk, right? I, I love that. The only thing is that tailgate is not assisted. It's not dampened in any way. So it is quite heavy. It's much heavier than it, it should be. Because if you compare that to a tailgate of F-150 or Ram, something that is dampened, uh, there's a big difference. <laughs> big difference. So that is, all, that is also one drawback. And also, another drawback um, about the tailgate is it's, uh, it's, not, it's a non-locking one, right? So that was always the issue until 2020 when they finally made it so that it locked with the doors. But beyond, before that, 2017 and 2019, it didn't. Only the trunk locked. The tailgate didn't, but there is a way to uh, get it to lock. There's a Honda accessory, and you could change the whole setup. And uh, I have a video about that if you're interested. So that is one thing that was missing from the factory. I don't know why, but they fixed that. Um, another thing I had to fix on the ridge line that wasn't so good is the rear doors. The rear doors, the openings were so narrow, so, so narrow. The doors aren't very wide to begin with, but the opening was so narrow, made it very difficult to get in and out. Also made it very difficult to haul things in there. Like if you wanted to put a bike or you want to put a TV, something you didn't want to put in the bed. Um, yeah, it made it difficult. So there's a door hack and that video did really well. So if you're interested, check that out too. But basically you're taking the front door checks or checkers and then you put it into the rear doors and then it just makes it open a little bit wider but that little bit makes a big difference so that that's also another flaw of the ridge line but through the hack i fixed it um what else is good well the all-wheel drive you know i've never gotten stuck in the snow or in the mud i created a video where i went through some deep mud create a video where i went through some deep snow and every time the ridge line came out okay now, granted, I did have some very aggressive um, all-terrain tires, so that, that might have helped a little bit, but the all-wheel drive system, the IVTM4, it does a good job. It does a good job. Also, it does electronically lock the rear differential when needed, so that is good. Um, so it's, it's a good setup. It's a good setup, and I, I've seen like the TFL guys, they take the ridge line and they do some difficult courses with it, um, so the all wheel drive setup in the ridge line is pretty good too. So to conclude, you might be thinking, well, okay, it's so good. Why are you getting rid of it? Right? Why don't you keep it or buy another one? Well, it's, it's time for me to move on. Some of you guys know that I did make another purchase. It is a Tesla model Y. So there's a couple reasons why I want to switch to model one. Number one, I'm a tech guy and Tesla's are cool, right? Full of tech. Um, and number two is, yeah, it just, I, after reviewing a, a Model Y, I thought it was just a great drive. Everything about the Model Y was great. It was fast, it felt good, it was comfortable, you know, of course, all the technology. And another thing too, for, for video creation purposes, uh, Model Y has a lot more that I'm interested in creating. For the Ridgeline, I've pretty much done it all. So those of you guys are in the market for a mid-sized truck, hopefully you'll take a look at the Ridgeline. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned to my future videos. And if you haven't checked out my other Richline videos, I'm gonna link a few of them here so you could click on it now. All right, take care guys, bye-bye.